Hey, welcome back to another Kotlin Bytes episode. My name is Jacob, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about inline functions and how they differ from cross inline and no inline. Let's get started. You may want to consider inlining functions if the respective functions contain lambdas as a parameter. Inlining often promotes higher performance when executing such a function. If you're unfamiliar with lambdas, or in this case closures, watch my video on callbacks, closures, and lambdas linked below. Let's first show an example of a function that can be inlined. However, it's not yet. I've already created this extension function upon a collection of integers. It is very similar to the built-in function for each, except it only returns the integers on the even indices. You'll notice that I loop through all values in the collection. If the index is even, I call the lambda closure. In my main function, I call this function. In this case, I am printing the integers that are on the even indices. Before inlining, let's first take a look at the bytecode for this file. Observing the bytecode is essential to seeing the difference between inline functions and not inline functions visually. To do this, double tap, shift, and type show Kotlin bytecode. The bytecode will appear on the side here. Feel free to look at the bytecode yourself, however it's a bit too complex for this video. So instead, we'll decompile the bytecode to Java. Here is the decompiled bytecode. You will see pretty much what we expect within the main function. You'll see the creation of the list, and then we call the for every other function. Okay, now let's inline the function and observe the bytecode again. You'll notice that instead of calling the for every other function after creating the list, the compiler has actually embedded the code into the main function. Most importantly, the print statement we had in our closure is now embedded within the for loop. Inlining here significantly reduces the function stack while executing your program, usually resulting in better runtime performance. Here's another inline function example. It takes two integers and compares them, then returns a string as a response to a closure. However, this response closure needs to be marked as cross inline since it is being called from within a local closure callback. The local callback is this runnable object. You'll notice that if we remove the cross inline modifier, there's an error explaining why we need it. Let's look at the bytecode to see how this cross inline function is compiled. As you can see, the majority of the function has been inlined. The exception is this runnable object. It looks like the compiler has created a new class to handle this runnable. Here it is. Again, the critical thing here is to note the callbacks have been removed. Our print statement has been copied three times into the run function since that is what we had in our original closure. So the critical thing that an inline function does is twofold. First, it inlines the function definition, wherever it's called, if possible. Second, it inlines the closure body into the embedded function wherever it calls the closure. The difference between inline functions and cross inline functions is that the cross inline lambda is separated into its own class. Finally, let's look at no inline. There may be a situation where inlining the lambda is not possible. For example, if we have a super secret function that is not inlined, and we would like to call it within another inlined function here, we have two choices. We can either cross inline the response lambda, or since the response lambda has the same signature as the super secret function response lambda, we could simply pass it along. But in this case, we'll have to mark the response is no inline, since it is being passed to a non-inline function. Observing the bytecode shows that the function was indeed mostly inlined. Even the first lambda was inlined. However, the response to the super secret function is not. It is just called like normal. When should you not use the inline modifier? Well, when there's no closures, there's no reason to. The code still could be inlined, However, you are just increasing your binary size since this code will be copied wherever it's called. Fortunately, the compiler warns us about this. With that being said, there is a situation 
where inline a lambda less function is appropriate. Reify generics. If you mark a generic as reified, it will require the function to be inlined. A reified generic allows you to access the class information using reflection without passing an instance to its class object. In this example, you can see I'm printing each class's simple name. This will work on any object. When we look at the bytecode, you'll notice that this works because the compiler simply replaces the generic with the required object. That is it for this episode of Kotlin Bytes. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please like and consider subscribing. Source code and additional resources are in the comments below. If there's anything you would like to see me explain in a later video, please message me or leave a comment. Otherwise, have a great day.